Andy Klemsher, who exposed a megachurch pastor, was born in 1970, and she is currently 54 years old. She said that Pastor Robert Morris started molesting her on the Christmas Eve of 1982, when he was 21 years old. Pastor Robert Morris was born on July 29, 1961, and got born again on February 16, 1981 at the age of 19 years. In December of the same year, James Robison invited him to join him at James Robison Ministries as a traveling evangelist. He also became a regular preacher at Shady Grove Church where he became friends with Cindy's parents. Pastor Robert started gaining popularity while traveling with James Morris. From this article in one of the newspapers in April 25, 1982, he was being taunted as the next Billy Graham. He had already preached in crusades with millions of people and led 10,000 people to Jesus by the time he was being interviewed. What I found interesting is that he used to go to schools fro meetings organized by James Robison Ministries giving motivational talks on sex. At this time, he was already married to his wife, Debbie, and had a son, Joshua. According to Cindy Clemsher's account, as told to the Wartburg Watch, Clemisher's abuse by Morris began on December 25, 1982, when she was 12 years old and Morris was 21. Their families were friends and Morris, along with his wife Debbie and their young son, would stay with Clemisher's family and join them on trips. Cindy's father was among the founders of Shady Grove Church. She said that the abuse happened in the states of Texas and Oklahoma, and in both states, she has no legal recourse because of the statute of limitation law. She said that when he started the molestation, he told her that she shouldn't tell anyone otherwise it would ruin everything. With Cindy's innocence, she couldn't understand what Pastor Robert was doing to her, and that's why the sexual assault continued for over four years until she was 16 years in the year 1987. In his own admission, Pastor Robert said and I quote, when I was in my early 20s, I was involved in inappropriate sexual behavior with a young lady in a home where I was staying. It was kissing and petting and not intercourse, but it was wrong. This behavior happened on several occasions over the next few years, end quote. During all this period, Robert was still preaching at Shady Grove Church, and in case you do not know, Shady Grove a church in Grand Prairie later became Gateway's Grand Prairie campus. On March 1987, when Cindy told her family what was happening, Robert says he resigned and started his restoration process, which according to him lasted for two years, that is March 1987 to March 1989. However, according to an excerpt from his book Dreams to Destiny, he wrote and I quote, After a month of working nights as a security guard at Motel 6, I felt I had made great strides toward humility. I decided that perhaps I was ready to return to ministry. So I checked back with James Robeson's ministry to see if they had any job openings. I was happy to discover that they needed a morning supervisor at their prayer center from 5 a.m. to 2 p.m., Morris wrote. That sure sounded better than the graveyard shift I had been working at the Motel 6. So I took the job. This shows he lied when he claimed he stayed out of ministry for two years. According to a newspaper advert in 1988, he was scheduled to preach on the 27th of August and September 9th, 1988, which shows he didn't finish the two years outside of ministry. In the same advert, they claimed that he had traveled to Poland in June 1987 for a two weeks crusade. That means, the claim that Cindy's dad approved his return to ministry was a lie, and Cindy confirmed so when she said, and I quote, My father never ever gave his blessing on Robert returning to ministry. My father told him he's lucky he didn't kill him. I am mortified that he is telling the world my dad gave his blessing. Of course, we forgive because we are called to biblically forgive those who sin against us. But that does not mean he is supposed to go on without repercussions, end quote. According to the advert on the newspaper, he was referred to as a former associate evangelist with James Robison Ministries. 
This vindicates James Robison who released a statement saying he never hired him again. As Pastor Robert continued with ministry, Cindy was going through counseling due to the trauma she endured in his hands. All this time she couldn't name what had happened to her until when she was 35 years when her counselor told her, and later Oprah Winfrey made her realize she had been molested. This was in 2005 when she started writing to Pastor Robert and the Gateway Elders to notify them of the crime which they acknowledged. In 2007 through her lawyer wrote to Pastor Robert, this time seeking for some financial restitution for money she had expended in conselling services. She had requested for $50,000, but instead gave her a counter-offer of $25,000 only if she signed a non-disclosure agreement which she refused. There was also another transcript of a phone call between Cindy and Robert where he asked her to name an amount she wanted him to pay for her silence. Pastor Robert could not pay and communication ceased at that that moment. Since 2007 to 2024, Cindy and her family continued stalking Pastor Robert. Wherever he went to preach whereby she would share her story with the host pastor, but none took any action. It was until the year 2024 when a retired pastor referred her to the Wartburg Watch, a blog dedicated to examining abuse and other issues in the church. The blog shared the account of Cindy Clemishier, which was first published on June 14th, and immediately after Pastor Robert through Gateway Crutch Elders released a statement acknowledging the moral. Failure On June 18th, 2024, Cindy released a statement responding to the statement from Gateway where she shared more damning details that Pastor Robert had never shared before. This led to his resignations and official communication made on June 18, 2024 and a law firm Haynes & Boone's was hired to do an independent inquiry to find out the true facts of the scandal. On June 28, 2024, the law firm made recommendations that required any Gateway Church elder with a potential conflict of interest take a temporary leave of absence from the Board of Elders. This includes any elder with a relational conflict and those elders who were on the board from 2005 to 2007. This led to the compulsory leave of James Morris who is Robert Morris' son and successor and three elders namely Kevin Grove, Steve Doolin, and Galen Losh. This are the recorded timelines of how the scandal unfolded from 1982 to today. I will keep updating you on any new developments. So, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and consider subscribing on this channel. God bless you.